Welcome back to Better Human your host, Cynthia Thompson. And today, I have a great show for you. I have the director of Girls on the Run with me, Jessica Otto. Mm -hmm. And she's going to tell us all about this great program that's here in Charlotte. Thank you for joining me today, Jessica. You're welcome. So what is Girls on the Run? Are these just girls running from something <laughs> or to something? Not exactly. <laughs> um, girls on the Run, what it is, is we're actually an experience-based curriculum um, program that actually meets with girls twice a week for uh -huh. 10 weeks and when we meet with the girls we talk to them about different topics that they face uh -huh. so these topics can range from gossiping bullying learning how to stand up for yourself hmm. um, one of the topics that I love talking about is personal values uh -huh. and that's one of the great ones so girls on the run mm -hmm. do you all run we do and so what happens when we meet with the girls uh -huh. is we pick a topic. So for instance, one day it might be that great personal values lesson. And so we're talking to the girls of what it means to be a girl on the run and what a personal value is. And then we weave in games that relate the topic to an activity uh -huh. um, with the end of the lesson actually in ending with a 5K um, practice. So Girls on the Run, is this a new organization? How long has it been around? It's been around for 16 years. It actually started 16? here in Charlotte. Yes. So it started here in Charlotte at Charlotte Country Day School uh -huh. and is now across the entire United States and Canada with over a 40 country waiting list. So who was the founder of this organization? Molly Barker. Um, she actually is a native Charlottean. Uh -huh. And one of the challenges that Molly faced is as a young girl, um, she traveled from one school to another. And when you started a new school, you're really trying to figure out who you mm -hmm. are, how do you fit within that community. Mm -hmm. And that was something that Molly was struggling with. And so between that and the challenges of adolescence, she really decided that she needed to come up with a program that would really help girls through that process. Uh -huh. And so that's really where the idea of Girls in the Run came in, hmm. is creating a curriculum-based program with her social work background to combat the challenges that the girls face at those early ages with also adding in that running component. So what's the age group for the girls that can participate in Girls on the Run? Well, we actually look at grades instead of ages because girls are in so uh -huh. many different ages. And so we do third through eighth grade and uh -huh. we offer two different programs. We offer a Girls on the Run program, which is for girls in third, fourth, and fifth grade. And then we have a Girls on Track program and that's for girls in sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. So a girl, if they were to join your organization, they can stay a part of it up until well, high school? Actually, all the way through. So you can start as a girl on the run in third uh -huh. grade, move on when you get to sixth grade to be a girls on track. When you get to become a high school student, you can come back and volunteer for our Girls on the Run program uh -huh. and learn some of your leadership skills. And then when you become 18, you can be an assistant coach and then you can volunteer to be a head coach. So technically, you can be with us for your entire life after you get in third grade <laughs> <laughs> and we would love to have you. <laughs> so I'm assuming that Girls on the Run, that you all are going to run a race. We do. Uh -huh. um, the one kind of difference between our races and other people's races is that our 5Ks are non-competitive. Uh -huh. And so for Girls on the Run, the focus is just being able to complete that goal. So setting a long-term goal and then working to complete it. Uh -huh. And so when you come to one of our 5Ks, it's it's quite the event. I mean, we're anticipating about 7,000 people in attendance at our event and about 3,000 wow. people running um, because you have the girls and you have the coaches and you have the parents and the grandparents. And um, it's not just um, the people going out there to run a specific time. It's uh -huh. being able to say you're going to do it to support each other um, and then look at what we're able to accomplish together. You know, we're going to take a short break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how you train the girls to get ready for this race. That sounds great. Okay? All right. I want to see the world. When you pick up a book, I used to read every night to all the younger kids and let your imagination break free. You won't believe how much fun it can be. Let down your <laughs> Experience a world of adventure. <laughs> excitement. <laughs> and endless possibilities. Get tangled up in a good book. Explore new worlds. Read. Visit read.gov today. Hey, Luis, did you know that you're Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo stays with Luisa Maria. Oh, yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Oh, great! <laughs> you never know when your child will be too sick to go to school. So have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luisa's 
the man, cause he's a Muslim. The man, cause he's a Muslim. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. And welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Jessica. She is the director of Girls on the Run here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, Jessica, before we went on break, we talked about the 5K race. Well, I don't want to call it a race. It's really a fun run mm -hmm. that you do with the girls. How do you go about training them to prepare them for the 5K? Well, it's actually built into our curriculum. Uh -huh. So every time we meet with the girls, um, we're introducing a topic, but at the same time, we're also preparing them to complete the 5K. Uh -huh. So the first day we meet with the girls, we're talking about what it means to be um, a unique individual. And at the same time, we're telling them that first day, you're going to run a 5K in 10 weeks. And they uh -huh. look at us like we're a little crazy. <laughs> but at the same time, it's that long-term goal setting. Uh -huh. It's saying you can do this. We believe in you. And then over the course of that 10 weeks, the workout portion of our activities is really gearing them up to be able to complete that 5K. Uh -huh. And so at the end of the season, it's just amazing to see their little faces when they realize themselves that they're capable of doing something they never thought they could. How about let's educate our viewers today. A lot of people probably don't know how far a 5K is. How far is that really? <laughs> well, if you ask a runner, <laughs> they're gonna say it's 3.1 miles. But if you ask one of my girls, they actually call it a 3.2 mile marathon. I'm not sure where they get the point extra point one in. And I, for anybody that's a marathon runner, they're gonna realize it's not a marathon. Uh -huh. But for these third grade girls, it is. Uh-huh. So I'll help you a little. <laughs> so, um, Besides training for the 5K, you said that you do different classes with the girls. Can you give us an example of what one of your classes would look like? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, something that you would go over. Definitely. And um, today I was actually coaching some of the girls, so I can ah. tell you a little bit about the lesson today. Um, today was our lesson nine, and so I've been with the girls for a couple weeks. This is actually our fourth week right now. And today we were talking about personal values. Uh -huh. So generally when you're talking to the girls and you say, what's a value, they start thinking something monetary. You know, money, right. my house, I value my dog. But what we were trying to get the girls to think about is, what are their personal values? So the girls actually had to decide um, whether they agree or disagree with a few different statements that we would say and really try to assess what they personally think. Uh -huh. And then really trying to help them realize that different people think different ways and they believe different ways. And Girls in the Run means that you're able to um, be okay with that and, uh -huh. and accept that in others and celebrate that uh -huh. in others. And so uh -huh. we had this great um, workout at the end where the girls, my, a lot of my girls ran almost two miles today um, in this lovely 70 degree weather. And every time they would come around, they would tell me which of the values on their little bingo sheet was most mm -hmm. important to them. And so it gets them thinking about what it means to be honest and uh -huh. respectful and caring and open-hearted. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking a lot about the things that you do. Mm -hmm. If by chance, well, I don't have any children, but I have two little nieces, they wanted to be a part of your program. Mm -hmm. Is there a registration process? a deadline, how could right. they get be a part of Girls on the Run? Well, we offer two different seasons. We uh -huh. offer a fall season and a spring season. The fall season is underway, as I was mentioning, uh -huh. um, but the spring season is coming up, and we would love to have any of your little nieces uh -huh. or anybody else's girls out to participate. The spring season will begin in February and go through May, uh -huh. and we do offer registration. So we offer two different kinds of registration. If you visit our website, you can actually get additional information mm -hmm. on that. Um, most of our registration is through online registration, mm -hmm. so that it's easy, easily accessible for anybody. Um, and you can visit our website at www.gotrcharlotte.org for more mm -hmm. information. Okay. Okay, so there is a registration process. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to turn any girls away because you've had too many? Uh, that, is a, that is a challenge for us. Um, uh -huh. What we do is we have a wait list because I will be honest, I hate turning girls away. It is my least favorite thing to uh -huh. do. If I can possibly add another team, <laughs> I'm going to do it. But, you know, one of the challenges is the fact that we are limited by the number of volunteers that we have uh -huh. um, as well as by our scholarship funding. Um, mm -hmm. I am very pleased to say we've never had to turn a girl away due to lack of funding. Mm -hmm. um, but we have had to turn a girl away due to lack of coaches. Oh. And so what we will do is we'll create a wait list and then um, all of the staff at Girls in the Run will work really diligently with some of our supporters to find additional volunteers mm -hmm. to accommodate those girls. You bring up a good point, volunteers. Mm -hmm. If a person wanted to volunteer to help your girls on the run, what would they need to do to become a volunteer? 
Well, we have quite a few different volunteer opportunities, ranging uh -huh. from one day where you could help out at that awesome 5K uh -huh. to really being a steady coach. Um, so anywhere in that, that whole range. And one of the most amazing opportunities is really coaching. I was mentioning that I coach. And one of the things I love about it is you're really getting to be a role model for these girls. It's uh -huh. just not going and showing and teaching. It's really becoming a friendship with these girls and mm -hmm. really letting them know that they matter um, and that they're important and they're powerful and they're capable and they're strong. Mm -hmm. And those are things that you get when you're with them and you get to build a relationship mm -hmm. with them. So anybody that's interested in learning more, I would love to talk to them mm -hmm. further. Again, they can visit our website for more information mm -hmm. um, or contact our office and I'd be happy to talk mm -hmm. to them about the organization and get them involved. So I understand that you work with school systems. How do you get it started in a school system? Like if you wanted to go to one of our newer schools, how would mm -hmm. you, what would be the process for you to starting a, I guess, chapter there? Yeah, it really depends on the school. So uh -huh. some of the schools, um, the staff members are really interested in getting involved. Some of the schools, um, the parents are really interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then some of the schools, we go to them and say, we have, we just know that this is a great location that really we haven't served yet. Uh -huh. And we would like to figure out what the next steps are. So. Mm -hmm. Um, all of those are great opportunities for us to be able to grow our program. Um, one of the nice things about our council is that we started with one school 16 years ago and this season with 13 girls and this season we have over wow. 130 programs and over 1600 girls in the program. So we're growing by leaps and bounds and generally if we go to a new school and say we're at these other schools uh -huh. then it shows that we have a strong program, a credible program and something that they can really um, all for the girls that has strong result. You know, we're going to take a short break. Okay. I have a few more questions for you. Sounds good. And it might be a little tough. All right. Okay? Sounds good. <laughs> Explore new worlds. Read. Visit literacy.gov and let the journey begin. I'm home and I love it. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home, but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making home affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Hey. You ready to go? Yeah, but the fire's not out. It's close enough. Huh. Close enough? If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. I, I mean, the next thing you know, you've torched our whole neighborhood. Which is why... We're not going anywhere? Exactly. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hi, and welcome back to Better Than Your Host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Jessica talking about Girls on the Run here in Charlotte. Now, Jessica, what do you see for the future for Girls on the Run? Oh, that's a vast question, I'll be yes. honest. Um, Locally, I have a lot of things going on. Uh -huh. um, we mentioned I mentioned that we had we've had considerable growth. One of the greatest things that we have is we just recently expanded into Cabarrus County. Ooh. So we've been there for a little over a year. Uh -huh. So you will definitely see us growing throughout Cabarrus County, addi adding additional schools, mm -hmm. really trying to make sure that we are offering quality programming for all of the girls. That's one mm -hmm. of our biggest goals that a girl that's interested in the program is able to participate in the uh -huh. program. So you're going to see considerable growth that direction. Um, the other part of it is we're looking at separating from our affiliate organization, which is Girls in the Run International. And so that really gives us another level of growth and uh -huh. ability to really expand um, our service to our community in mm -hmm. different ways as mm -hmm. well. Um, now, nationally, I know that they keep growing by leaps and bounds. Uh -huh. and so the goal of Girls in the Run International is to be in all 50 states, and then from that point, be able to grow into all the different countries around the world. 
I know that we've been talking about Girls on the Run being in the schools. Do you ever go to any of the neighborhood centers? Do you do. have any there? Mm -hmm. Actually, we have an amazing partnership with the um, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. Mm -hmm. And so we are actually in um, YMCA's, we're in community centers across, but there are one specific community center called the Greenville Center. Uh -huh. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with it mm -hmm. or not, but. Um, we have police officers that actually coach our programs and seek out girls from local um, neighborhoods that are high risk uh -huh. and they get them in the program and they coach the program mm -hmm. and they do it it's on duty which is just unbelievable mm -hmm. we have what amazing role models to be able to serve yes. our girls and um, it's just a great opportunity to showcase what amazing people we have in our community and then also be able to reach girls that we never thought we'd be able to reach uh-huh so, um, do you think you'll ever have a boys on the run group? You know, we tried that. Oh, you did? And I have to tell you a story. It's, it's a little crazy. Um, a long time ago when they had girls on the run, they decided that they were going to have boys on the run as well. Uh -huh. And so they got all these boys together and um, they sat down and they were talking about feelings. And as soon as they sat down, the first boy was trying to be very serious, and the next thing you know, one of the guys did a joke, they all jumped up on top of each other, and they said, okay, this isn't going to work. Uh -huh. And so there actually is a local organization that does very similar to what Girls in the Run does. It's called Let Me Run, uh -huh. and it's a great organization. Um, their program is competitive-based because uh, boys are more focused on competitiveness that's true. than girls are. But one of the things that they figured out with the boys that we didn't know is they make them run first. <laughs> so they get them tired first, <laughs> and then they can talk to them instead of our program where we have them talk first uh -huh. and then do the warm-up uh -huh. and then the workout. So uh -huh. it's a great organization for anybody interested in boys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't figure that one out so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to try it to see if it's going to work first, exactly, right? Exactly. That's how you do with girls on on. You tried it and it worked exactly. and it stuck and you kept going and going and you got more and more girls. Exactly. Do you think you will ever have too many girls on a day that you have a race? No. You don't think you have too many? No. I. One of the amazing things about our about our 5K is that all of our teams, they only can have about 15 girls per team uh -huh. on a team. So these girls are in small groups of 15 and it's just a great way for them to bond. Uh -huh. And then you get to the 5K and they realize it's just, it's not just them doing it. Uh -huh. It's all of these pockets of girls. And so it's the strength, strength in numbers type of uh -huh. thing that you run across. So we actually had to move up to Huntersville for our 5K uh -huh. um, because of the fact that really our roads were too narrow here in Charlotte. And and so I had to move up there where the roads are really wide in this business oh. park. And uh -huh. I told people the only other road I could go on would be the highway and they won't let me shut that down. So uh, no. um, I just think it's a great opportunity to get all the girls together and the more the merrier. Do you encourage your girls to do other 5Ks? Definitely, definitely. Um, the purpose of the program is to really set that as a long-term goal uh -huh. and allow the girls to realize that just like with that 5K, you set that goal and then you were able to work towards it over the course of the 10 mm -hmm. weeks. Um, it's the same thing if those girls are interested in going to college or if they're interested mm. in doing a half marathon or a marathon or, mm -hmm. or something academic. If they want to be a doctor and they never dreamed mm -hmm. or they were the first person in their family to go to college, mm -hmm. it's setting that long-term goal and being able to go to it. So we find that a lot of our girls that have never done 5Ks before come to our program and find out this is something that they love doing uh -huh. and then they expand to doing other 5Ks. Uh -huh. Um, and the nice thing is then they come back to do our program again and they come in as positive role models for their peers. Have you won any awards for this organization, for the work that you're doing? Um, one of the things that we really are lucky in is the fact that we have been celebrated by so many other groups uh -huh. and we're starting to become distinguished as a great organization. Um, just locally, we had I had a judge recommend a daughter to be, in, um, a girl to be in the program uh -huh. and we're referred to by many, many organizations and it's something every time we have a parent call and say, I heard about this organization to me, it's just as important as getting um, Molly, our founder, in uh -huh. Runner's World magazine. Um, but across the United States and Canada, we're constantly in the media, which is just an really? amazing thing to be part of um, because people are talking about it. And when you have people talking about your organization, good or bad, I don't think I have any, heard anything <laughs> bad, but <laughs> if you hear people talking about uh -huh. it, that lets you know that you're doing something right. And uh -huh. for me to know that I'm part of an organization that's making such a positive difference within our community, mm -hmm. Um, really builds me, builds my confidence, and then also builds our organization's uh -huh. confidence. 
You know, I want to ask you a question. It just popped in my head. Do you know if um, Michelle Obama, I know she had this Let's Move program yes, that, yes. that she started. Do you know if she's aware of the work that you're doing? I, I believe they are. In fact, um, the president of Girls in the Run International, her name is Liz Coons, she actually pitched to the White House. She wants to have a five, Girls in the Run 5K on the White House lawn someday. <gasps> That's her goal. So uh -huh. hopefully someday it will happen. We'll see. But we'll see. Um, they're actually trying to be part of the Let's Move, and we have part, um, partnered with them occasionally, uh -huh. I believe, mm -hmm. on the national level mm -hmm. and so that's something that um, if just getting um, students and children out becoming physically active mm -hmm. you can't go wrong mm -hmm. so tell me why did you start this why are you a part of this organization you didn't start it but why are you such a big part of it what does it mean to you to be a part of this you know um, I have been a runner since I was in third grade uh -huh. and I found out the power that running really has and when I went to college, I decided I wanted to make a difference in my community. And as cheesy as it sounds, I actually have my own personal mission statement. Uh -huh. um, and I wanted to make a difference. And so from my undergraduate degree, through my master's degree, through my internship, I always knew what I was going to do was going to have something to do with making a mm -hmm. difference in our community and running. Mm -hmm. And when I found Girls in the Run, well, when I started that process, Girls in the Run didn't exist. But when I found Girls in the Run, it was a perfect fit for me. Uh -huh. um, and then to be able to come to work every day knowing that you're making a difference in your community and really being able to enjoy your job. Mm -hmm. um, is really invigorating. It keeps me going, it keeps me excited. Um, I tell people that Girls in the Run is not just my job, it's my hobby, uh -huh. and my husband will concur. Um, <laughs> because I'm always talking about it. Uh -huh. I, wherever I go, I am handing out business cards and talking about the organization uh -huh. or wearing my Girls in the Run <laughs> gear because I, I really believe in what we're doing uh -huh. and really celebrate it. Um, and want other people to talk about it as well. If you've never heard about it, let me tell you about the organization <laughs> because maybe we can bring it to your community uh -huh. and maybe we can serve your girls too. So, can you give us, before we have to close, a success story, a special story that really touches your heart oh. when you, somebody asks you about girls on the run? I have so many, but um, the one that pops into my head, the first one that pops in my head is really um, about Jamaica, and I was telling you about the Greenville Center. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This, this past spring was their first season, and there was a little girl named Jamaica, and I was working with um, a crew of people that were just wanting to do a focus on this specific team of girls, mm -hmm. and they videoed Jamaica at the finish line. Now you have to understand, Jamaica comes from a very low income neighbor, neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And um, she came in and said, Girls in the Run means so much to me. And she, at Aww. the finish line, she was telling um, all these people that she stopped at the finish line and cheered other girls that she didn't know in to the finish because that's what you do at Girls in the Run. Uh -huh. And you stop, breathe, listen, and respond. And for her, um, when she crossed that finish line, what she wanted to respond with is cheering her friends that she never knew into the finish line as uh -huh. well so that they were all able to complete this 5k and I just think to myself what a powerful statement for girls that that don't have as much as other girls to still have the ability to celebrate and have everything that they deserve mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because we're all beautiful we're all we're all powerful mm -hmm. and we're all capable just the way we are oh, and I just gosh. love it <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, she's adorable. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for being on my show. Thank you. You've got to come back, and maybe I might run with your girls. I would this love spring. to have you at the 5K. If you want to do the 5K, I will pay for you to do the 5K. Oh we'll put God. it on Girls in the Run. <laughs> we'll get you hooked up with Jamaica or one of the girls. I would love okay. to have you. I okay. would love to have you. Okay. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching our show today. Better you here on Public Access 21 every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you so much. I know. Oh, I'm in love.